On behalf of the three of us, uh, just a word of thanks. It has been marvelous to be invited to be a part of this Vinter Conference. Uh, when our ancestors first came uh, to the U.S. from the renewal movements in Sweden, uh, they called themselves mission friends. And we have been warmed by your passion for mission for this broken world, and we have been deeply uh, touched by your warm welcome, uh, your fellowship with us. It's been great. Uh, so President Svensson and all the leaders of the church, uh, we want to thank you. But if I may especially say thank you to three people, uh, as one who put together our conference for uh, 15 years, our Midwinter Conference, I want to say a special thank you to Kurt, uh, Ula Marie, and uh, Anders for this marvelous conference. So thank you. And this is actually what I've dreamed of doing my whole life, being Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> so I'm extremely excited here. Ephraim? Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, yes, Oprah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, as, as this is your home country and your home church, we want to talk about the fact that we know that there are so many things we share in common with these with this church here, and yet we know that there are differences, cultural differences. For instance, we know for sure that no covenant leader has ever been seen in red pants. That's right. But the president of this church wears red pants. Yes, he does. I wish our president wore red pants, but he probably never will. So tell me, um, what have you enjoyed most on the cultural differences in your experience here in Sweden? Oh, well, you know, there, there's a few, but I want to, um, I really want to mention Fika. I, I am sold on Fika. Uh, not just because of um, the, the, the break towards fellowship, but there's really a sense that, um, that Fika is a continuation of the experience of worship and a continuation of the experience of the Holy Spirit. It's not a break away from worship. It's not a, a break away from a sensing of the Holy Spirit, but it's one more act of worship and sensing the Holy Spirit. Marvelous. David. Yes. Uh, the Apostle Paul tells us to meet together so that we can encourage each other. As you've been here this week, tell us something that's, or, or a couple of things that have uh, encouraged you, that have brought you joy. Well, just as you said, it's really been a wonderful week for me. And uh, I always like watching a group and kind of reading and seeing what's on the inside of their hearts. And so on my little iPhone here, I put down just a couple of things I want to share with you that I received from you. One is you have a great group dynamic. And I first noticed in the singing and how strong the singing was, but I noticed it in the caring and the loving and the hugging, the conversations in the halls. That was really good. Um, I think you have creativity with tradition and you know how to do both at the same time. You're not this or that, but you bring them together, and I love seeing that. There's a word that I use for an audience that I very seldom see, and it's called thirsty. It's, they're thirsty for something more, and I feel like you're thirsty for God, and you're thirsty for growing in your ability to do ministry for Christ, and that's a wonderful thing. Um, for me, the presence and place and authority of women pastors. I really love seeing that. The American Covenant Church has made quite a lot of progress in the last 10 to 15 years, and we have quite a lot of progress more to make. And to see that here, that really blesses my heart. And, uh, you know, with what Ephraim talks about and I talked about, you want to do the whole gospel. You don't want just evangelism or just social justice. You want to do the whole gospel. And finally, you're Christocentric. You place and keep Jesus in the middle. And I love that. Thank you. Ephraim, um, 
Obviously, one of the passions you brought to us is the passion of seeing uh, the church reflect all of God's kingdom. Uh, this marvelous thing of every nation, tribe, people, and language worshiping the, the lamb in front of the throne. Um, do you have one heart thing to share with us about what that really means and why it matters to all of us? Well, it, it matters because uh, I shared this in my seminar earlier today. Uh, my wife, Denisha, and I, we love going to the movies. But we, we love getting to the movie theater early enough so that we can see the trailers or the previews of movies that are gonna come out soon. And the church ought to be a trailer of the kingdom of God. It ought to be a sneak preview of where we're going to live eternally. And as we engage a multicultural world for the kingdom of God, we give, we give people outside the church a taste of the truth, the love, the justice, the compassion, the transformation that we will experience in full. I heard an old preacher once say, when Jesus returns, this is ultimate justice. But until then, it's just us. <laughs> David, uh, we're not gonna keep these folks too long here, so, uh, but your passion has been for a long time training up a new generation and gifting the church with people who have been equipped to be leaders of the church so that the church can move forward with the, with the freedom and, and grace of God in powerful ways. What's one thing you want to share with us about leadership? Um, there's all sorts of other things about being a leader, but I think the most important thing is keeping your passion for God hot in your heart. And you do that through being saturated in scripture by having a, a daily life of communion with God and by being dependent on the Holy Spirit when you minister in the name of Christ. And so that heart that's hot after God is really important for a Christian leader. Thank you. One last question, Ephraim. When I grow up, I want to preach like you. <laughs> and so, Tell us, uh, you bring not only a passion for God's word and a passion for the good news, but over and over again, you bring a great tradition of preaching that all of us just, uh, it's, we're, like, we're like birds waiting for food. Uh, help us, this, is, this group, um, God's chosen people, maybe partially God's frozen people. Um, <laughs> Help us, help us with this uh, gospel preaching, Ephraim. Yes! Man, well, you know, uh, uh, well, one, I want to say how grateful I am that coming to Sweden, I was free to preach 100% like who I am. And I appreciate that you gave me the opportunity to be the... Uh, to be the preacher that God has created me to be. And I think that that's what preaching needs to be today. It needs to be authentic. I think in whatever cultural context you preach from, be true to that context. And when I'm preaching, I'm trying to honor all those African-American preachers, those slave preachers, those preachers that preached in segregation, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I, when I preach, I'm realizing I'm preaching on the shoulders of those in my culture who came before me, and some of them shed blood to preach the gospel. That informs how I preach. And the question becomes, what informs you? Whose shoulders do you stand on when you proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ? Amen. You have blessed us uh, enormously. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you.